Hello everyone, it's Father Mike Petrano. We're just about at the end of the Memorial Day weekend in which we come together as a nation to honor those who gave their lives in service to our country and our ideals of freedom. It's also here in the East End, the traditional beginning of the summer season. And this year, we're all hoping that the summer season will be a time of recovery, renewal, healing, and hope for everyone. There's much in the news these days about the opening of churches. Much is confusing, some misleading, so I thought I would take a moment to give you this report and shed some light on it all, uh, at least from my perspective as the pastor of Sacred Hearts. First of all, and very importantly, when we hear about a church reopening, please know that our church here has never been closed. Yes, we did stop celebrating Mass for the last 10 weeks on Sundays and weekdays, but we never stopped opening our doors. We considered our entire staff to be essential workers because of the spiritual life of our church, which is essential to you. And so our doors were opened every day for visits to the church and for personal prayer. Our maintenance staff was here to keep everything clean, safe and clean and secure. We, of course, were able to offer mass in the church twice a week, which we taped and broadcast online. Uh, we visited the hospital on numerous occasions to anoint the very ill and the dying. We celebrated funeral services at graveside for those who have died. And we kept our parish cemetery open and available for all of our families in need. Sadly, there were more funerals in the last two months than we would typically expect even in the course of a whole year. So we have been very, very affected by this COVID crisis. Here in the office, we've made efforts to call, and we're still working on that, every registered family in our community to offer our help in any assistance and reassurance that we can bring. We continue to provide learning materials for our young people in religious education by email so that they can work with their families to continue to pass on the faith and, and learn about their Catholic faith. So yes, there's more than that too, but we have been very open. When you hear about churches, perhaps in New York City, which are just reopening, what they're talking about is the fact that in those areas, because of safety and security, church buildings were entirely closed and often their offices as well. So this is a time when those buildings will be open for personal prayer and the offices will be open once again to minister to people. Something that's new happening right here in our church, in our diocese, is that beginning this weekend, we will be able to offer some smaller ceremonies in church. We'll be able to celebrate baptism, weddings, and funerals, as long as the numbers of people in attendance are very small. Obviously, the main issue, and what everybody is interested to know about, is when will we be able to return to those larger celebrations, such as Sunday Mass, and larger weddings and funerals. While we often hear news about what other states are doing, it's important to keep in mind that our diocese, and in fact, the entire New York area, was very uniquely affected and continues to be affected by the COVID crisis. The Diocese of Rockville Center, our diocese, comprises two counties, Nassau and Suffolk. And within that area, borders of Nassau and Suffolk, over 77,000 people have been infected with COVID-19. And as of today, more than 4,000 people have died. Only the city of New York as a community was more affected. In fact, there were more cases of COVID here in Nassau and Suffolk County than were seen in 45 states within our country. So obviously the challenges for large gatherings in the Diocese of Rockville Center, very different than a state like Wyoming, where in the whole state, which is many, many, almost a hundred times as large, there were less than a thousand cases, and fortunately, uh, only a handful of deaths. Even here in our own diocese, there are considerable differences. Our parish is small. We have only 1,200 year-round families. Some parishes in our diocese have as many as 10,000 families. We have on a weekend about 1,400 people who come to church. Some parishes, very large ones, 
can have five to 7,000 people coming to mass on weekends. And so as a diocese together, we're trying to make a plan that works for everyone so that we will be able to, when we return to mass, do that safely and securely. Here in our parish, in our church, we have figured that right now with the social distancing needs, that at best we would be able to have about 150 people uh, in mass at any one time. Uh, on average, the number of people who come to mass in our church are more than 200, although some of the masses are smaller. But to continue to offer mass in a way that is not confusing and safe and secure for all, we're hoping to wait for a time when those social distancing and numbers in the building at any one time guidelines are a bit higher so that we will be able to gather everyone safely. And it's not only actually our parishioners that we're concerned about, although that's a very enormous concern, but you probably know that here on the east end of Long Island, many of our masses are celebrated by our senior priests, priests like Father Bill Gill, Father Joe Finnerty, Father Don Beyer, Father Paul Dom, who sadly passed away just a few weeks ago. Uh, these men are considered to be part of that high-risk group, and we certainly don't want to endanger our ministers either, and many priests in our diocese are in the same situation. So we're trying to wait and be a little patient and come up with a plan so that when we return to Mass, it will be done safely. What does that all add up to? Well, right now, we continue to be open each and every day. Our church is here for private prayer from 8 in the morning till 4 in the afternoon, and for our office is open each day, uh, Monday through Saturday, for your spiritual needs. We're able to now, beginning this week, to celebrate smaller ceremonies for baptisms, weddings, and funerals, and we're happy to do that for anyone who needs that. Uh, we will be planning for that return to Sunday Mass when we receive those guidelines from the civil authorities and also from our diocese that will apply to every church in Nassau and Suffolk County. And we'll also, and this is very important, continue the policy that no one is obligated to attend Mass if they have any concerns about their health, welfare, or well-being during this time. That's why we have Mass online. That's why we reach out in that way so that people can stay connected, even if it is more beneficial for them to remain home and to be safe in these days. Most of all, it's important for us to remember that we are a church. Our priority is life, the protection of everyone's life and well-being. We have to be absolutely sure that when we resume mass and invite people to gather, that will not be creating additional danger or risk for anyone. Yes, it's a sacrifice, a very great sacrifice to go without the Eucharist, but I am confident that this pandemic will come to its end and that the current interruptions will be well worth the time that we've invested for everyone's safety and health. Thank you so much for listening today. I look forward to celebrating Mass with you online and with the Lord's help very soon within our church. Thank you and God bless.